Hey, welcome back. Let's uh, let's have a look at Death Ride Sol uh, Solano, 16th Panzer. Interesting stuff and fascinating stuff as well. I have really struggled with this set of rules, the setup, and uh, trying to cross-reference it to the Kursk rules, which are more complete and more robust and more detailed. And I think that's where a lot of effort has gone in. And it wasn't until, <laughs> it wasn't until about, oh, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes ago where things, things started to click for me in terms of the gameplay. And uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of little stuff going on here that you really need, a, a, and I'm not a huge fan of informational counters, but you need some counters here to kind of keep track of things so that you don't screw up. I, I, I could not fathom playing this game with, you know, uh, another two or three modules attached and going through one by one without popping some informational counters down to help you keep track of things. But I really feel like this game is designed for the guys and girls that want to do the massive con play of three modules and get maybe, you know, maybe half a dozen turns done or 10 turns or whatever it may be <clears throat> after they've spent a day or two setting it up because uh, the games tend to, as you can see here, we're, we're dealing with, uh, let me, before I go shoot my mouth off, I think it's 300 meters of hex here. So let's see what this says. And bear with me because I, I want to get into some, some of the cool things once we talk about some of the, the challenging things, but I need to talk, yeah, 330 meters of hex. And in, in this, uh, this game's an hour a turn. So 330, uh, what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with 30 hexes across. So, you know, not a lot of space, right? And, and we've got a couple hundred counters on the board here. It's, or a hundred counters on the board here. It's early. <laughs> In the battle, uh, the uh, counter counter count is going to double or triple. We'll we'll put uh, two, one, two, three more regiments for the Brit for the Americans on four. Uh, four if you count the um, Paris, and then oh shoot, I mean easily another hundred German counters. Uh, and I think at that point you're you're looking at uh, an extended amount of time to play a turn. And and here's why. But here's the good thing. And here's why people get excited about it. I think because there's a lot of interplay going on, and there's a lot of um, cool decision making that really kicks in from the get go. And the the choices you make about where you set up and uh, how you position your forces are going to matter. And uh, you're going to have to f allow for some doctrine, and you're going to have to allow for uh, the uh, the formation integrity. There's no penalties for not doing any of that stuff, but you're going to have to be thinking about it so that you get the m the biggest bang for your buck out of all these different units. So, so let's let's focus in on just this little section of the map here. In fact, I'm going to move the camera. And, uh, and and I'll I'll preface this by saying supply and command, uh, as far as I can tell, based on the Kursk rules and uh, the Salerno rules, pretty straightforward stuff. It's counting the number of hexes back to a HQ or to a maintenance unit or to a medical unit or to a uh, supply unit to allow you to take replacements and uh, be in supply and have the full effects of full supply and all that sort of stuff. It's very straightforward. So as long as you manage the hex counting business, you're in good shape and you shouldn't, shouldn't have any issues at all. Now there are add-on modules for communications and air and I mean, you can do sorty dog fights and all sorts of crazy stuff, and that's all in the curse modules. We're not doing any of that here. We are using all the optional rules. And uh, we're just trying to we're just trying to muddle through. So uh, one full turn in. Here's what's going on, and and here's why it's so very interesting. So, 
these two lines roughly approximate where you're allowed to set up uh, north or south of, depending on what side you're on. And the idea here is that we're trying to prevent uh, the Germans uh, are trying to prevent the capture of bridges. The Americans are trying to capture the bridges so they can push further north and east and west, as the case may be, and uh, you know go do stuff. Now by by electing to set this guy up back a little bit. I originally had him uh, in reserve mode, similar to this guy over here, which you can't see, it's, it's sort of roughly at the edge of the frame, but it's not important right now. And then I had uh, these guys here in uh, their dug in position with wire. And I had um, other guys in uh, with minefields, you can see over here, and then fortifications over here actually at one of the bridges, right? There's a bridge right there. And I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna set up behind these locations, and I'm not gonna try and defend this primary line, um, this starting line. Let's set back towards our, our where our, our key defensive areas are, and then the Americans, well, they, uh, you know, they've got these sort of boundaries for formations that roughly they need to adhere to, and it, it'll become somewhat relevant later uh there'll be some questions about whether or not i can fire outside of my boundaries but we're going to assume for the sake of uh gameplay that you can but let's come back up here so i, I chose to put this guy back here to uh, provide opportunity fire uh, so that i could start pounding on guys as they moved uh moved up to disable these uh wire things and then do some sort of close assault up here so so as we went through this exercise i'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and hopefully i'll get this up in a decent resolution for you so so as i went through this exercise i uh, the first thing i did as the americans was and the germans go first but the germans are basically you know really didn't do very much they fired a couple of long range shots, had some modest success with those. And uh, it was then the Americans turn, they used their naval power and they put two suppressions, a red two suppression on here. And then they said, oh, okay, well, that's really cool. Let's, uh, and they did some other stuff over here with all their uh, uh, naval forces, which are quite significant. There are three, six, eight ships that uh, provide a lot of firepower. And so they uh, they started moving guys up. And what they did was first up is they moved up one of these. Nope, where is he? Nope, I think it was this guy, this guy here. So uh, the 751st uh, Tank Brigade advanced up to here. And the Germans said, whoa, 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 hang on. I'm gonna have a shot at that. Their range is seven. Long range is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, whoops, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I shot here, one hex behind him and missed. And then this guy here, this uh, AA gun said, oh, well, let me have a shot at that. Well, he has a firepower of six and a range of nine. He took a shot and, uh, and hit and put uh, two hits on that guy. He rolled the like a nine or something like that. And, um, and in fact, earlier on, I had inflicted this step loss back one hex, but in hindsight, there's a rule in Kursk that says that the tanks, uh, because of their speed of movement, you apply a, a DRM, a malice. <coughs> and so we, we discarded that. So uh, we, we use that rule, I think it makes sense. It's hard to hit moving targets at range, makes sense. Not sure I agree at short range, but whatever. Um, so this guy could fire one time at the unit that's moving and he fires and that's it. And then this guy could fire one time upon moving these guys moving into the next hex. And if they got two suppressions here, if I wanted to fire again, if I wanted to keep moving and say, oh, you know, let's press my luck and move another hex. If I had another unit over here that had not fired, 
I could fire again. So I'm guessing this guy here would be a great candidate. He could fire and shoot that guy at him, you know, here. And he could, uh, this tank here could then run the risk of taking another suppression. So just in this little microcosm, uh, I kind of feel like uh, Marco Wargamer here. I zoomed in on four counters. But uh, what, what, I, what, what happens here is you have these set of choices for this particular unit that's moving. How many times do I want to fire? How many units do I want to fire? What else do I want to fire at? And how, uh, for these guys, how much do I want to press my luck? Because once I get to the fifth su suppression, whoops, I'm done. I'm dead. Gone, finished, eliminated, out of the game. And uh, every individual discrete uh, suppression for armor is a 10% reduction in capability and a 20% reduction if you're infantry. So very interesting. So... You've got to go. Oh, okay, can I can I can I deal with a ten percent reduction? Yeah, I probably can. Twenty percent. Oh, may not want to take more than that. So I'm going to stop here. Now, why do these guys have these OW counters on them? Well, that's really cool too. So these OW counters, Overwatch counters. Uh, and so the so before I get to that, what would have been cool is to have an op fire counter that I could put on top of this guy. And I believe they're in the curse game, right? So, you know, whatever. I feel like this is kind of like the freaking orphan module uh, that was kind of built. And then they went, oh, I'm going to do curse or something. And it's, it's been ignored for the time being. But maybe they'll uh, bring out, uh, you know, sell some cheap uh, counter sheets and let you uh, buy some op fire counters and fired counters and stuff like that. So you put op fire counter on this guy only for the duration of this guy's movement. And then you would take it off. Oh, so what I'm doing, I'm just cocking these guys. It's easier just to cock them and then and then straighten them back up and, and say, hey, yeah, I'm available. So these guys, Overwatch. With Overwatch as an armored unit, I can move quarter of my movement rate, uh, which is 20. So I can move five. So he can, <coughs> excuse me, he moved five. Let's say he moved one, two, three, four, 40 here. So he was only going to be able to move one more hex. So if he had moved to there, uh, one more unit would have taken a shot at him. But if he moved to here, one, two, three, he would have been in uh, short range of this guy, but still in long range of this guy. And uh, you know the ranges matter because the ranges give you multiplier, 